Doreen, are you going to come up? We'd love for the school district to be up here. Hey, Tara, would you mind asking Brian if, if the video's going? I think, I think we're up. Is it up? Great. So uh, welcome, my name is Darren Gale, I'm the Public Information Officer uh, for the City of Yuba City. Uh, we're here joined today by a number of elected officials uh, from across the Yuba Sutter region. Uh, here to today we have uh, our Assembly Member James Gallagher, Senator Jim Nielsen, and elected officials from Yuba County, Sutter County, uh, City of Live Oak, City of Marysville, City of Yuba City. Um, we also have uh, representatives uh, from uh, a couple of our levy districts uh, here uh, today too. Uh, we are uh, broadcasting this live on uh, Facebook Live. If residents have questions, we will try to uh, answer a few questions um, at the end uh, from the press that is uh, here in the room and also from those on Facebook. Um, at this time, I would like to introduce uh, the Yuba City Fire Chief, uh, Pete Daly, who uh, will uh, kind of begin the process and then he will introduce our, uh, a couple other elected officials to, uh, to speak. Good afternoon. My name is Pete Daly, I'm the fire chief for Yuba City. Um, obviously it's that time of year, it's a rainy season, and we have lots of rain among us. With that, we have lots of water in this area. Uh, this community is not um, uh, inexperienced when it comes to flooding in, in this type of area. Uh, I was here in the 1986 flood, when we had that situation. I was here in the 1997 flood. I was here in the 2006 high water issue. So this is nothing new to public safety officials in this area. Um, we have a very good plan. We have very good cooperation amongst the cities and counties in this area. One of the things nice about this community, this area here, is that we're a very small community and we work well with other local jurisdictions as well as, well as state and federal jurisdictions. But we have a tendency to take care of ourselves and we do that very well. So we're very well prepared and we have good plans in place to manage uh, high water issues like this. Um, Obviously, our neighbors to the north right now are having some challenges up in Oroville. Uh, I was able to attend that briefing this morning. Uh, a CAL FIRE incident management team has been assigned to that incident to assist the uh, Department of Water Resources and other local uh, and city, county, and state agencies to deal with the spillway up there. Um, I feel very comfortable with what they're doing up there. Um, they're wrapping their arms around that. They just got there this morning, so they're getting in place and coming up with plans to uh, mitigate that emergency. Uh, down here in the Yuba Sutter area, I feel very comfortable with what they're doing and how they're handling that and I don't have a lot of concerns right now. Our concerns is we need to follow our process. Uh, we have plans in place so we need to continue our communication with our other local agencies. We need to make sure we continue monitoring our levees and our, and, um, our areas that get high water and we need to make sure we have the resources in place to be able to uh, respond if necessary to uh, anything that occurs. The best way the public can help is to be prepared. So you need to be prepared just like we were back in 97 to be able to listen to um, your public safety officials. So when you're asked to do something that it helps us because it creates a larger challenge for us if, if the public doesn't adhere to our concerns or our warnings um, when it regards to evacuations and things like that. Um, there's nothing in place for the Yuba City area right now in, in the immediate Yuba I'll speak for Yuba City. In the Yuba City area, uh, everything is in place, everything is fine, we're in monitoring level right now. Um, if the situation changes, then we'll make everyone aware of that. But be prepared. Um, keep, keep looking at the websites, keep looking at Facebook, pay attention to social media. Uh, there, I know there's call numbers and call centers that you can contact to be able to uh, keep informed of what's going on in your local area. Uh, so the two recommendations I would make to the public out there is one, be prepared. Uh, be prepared by having make sure your prescriptions are taken care of, you have water, you have food, your animals are taken care of, uh, because that can become a challenge for us if we have to put things in place uh, down the road and have to deal with things other than the flood. One of the things we've always tried to do with floods in the past is take care of 
provide safety first and get people in a safe location. So please keep that in mind and follow directions that are given out by public safety officials if the need arises. But as I said right now, there's no anticipation of that at all. I feel very comfortable with, with what the uh, water levels are doing and what they're doing up in Lake Oroville. <coughs> and I feel very comfortable with, um, with the plans we have in place. So with that, if there's no questions, and then I'll defer to Mr. Gallagher. All right, well, uh, thank you everybody for joining us to, uh, here today. Uh, you know, certainly here in the Yubaseta region, uh, we're no strangers to uh, the threat of flood. Um, we've gone through, you know, five years of drought, uh, but we all know here that <coughs> water can get up high and, and we want to pay close attention to that. And, you know, the big message of, uh, of this conference is just, you know, letting the community know that they need to just be uh, on, on alert and paying attention uh, we have some great resources, uh, both through Yuba and Sutter County, uh, that should be up on your screen, uh, where you can go to keep getting alerts uh, and updates on what's going on. Um, I can tell you uh, right now, there's, there is no imminent flood threat um, at this time, uh, so uh, we want people to know that. Uh, but in the Yuba Sutter area, we're always, you know, flood aware and flood prepare. Uh, and so we want to make sure that uh, uh, that people are continuing to monitor those things. Uh, up at uh, or Oroville Dam, uh, that is a uh, you know a situation that both Senator Nielsen and I have been in constant communication with Department of Water Resources uh, over. Uh, it is something that we have to continue to monitor because the the main spillway there is damaged, um, and that is you know one of the ways that we help uh, one of the you know, greatest ways that we help control flows uh, on the Feather River watershed system. Um, so it, we have to continue to monitor that. The good, the good news is um, that uh, they were able to ramp up the flows out of the spillway um, and the inflows coming in from this latest storm system are starting to ramp down. Um, so that's a, a good situation for us and, uh, and it's at least likely at this point that the emergency spillway will probably not have to be used, um, although that we have to continue to monitor that. Um, so, uh, you know, that uh, that's a good news at, at this point in time. But again, we just want our community to, uh, many of you already know this, but we want everybody to just uh, continue to be aware, um, you know, have plans in place in the case that there is uh, an emergency. Um, and that you're getting notified by local emergency services that uh, more action needs to be uh, take place. Um, uh, you know, have have a plan for what you're going to do with your family. And there's tips on here of how you can be prepared. So again, I want to point to these resources uh, for everybody. Uh, you know, Sutter County Office of Emergency Services, uh, Yuba County Office of Emergency Services has a lot of uh, good information for you, and it will also keep you posted on any new developments um, as they move forward. So we want everybody to pay attention and also have, make, you know, have plans in place so that you're ready. Um, but at this time, there's no imminent threat of flooding and uh, people need to know that as well. So uh, with that, I just, you know, I'll turn it over to Senator Nielsen, who's also been uh, working very closely on this issue. Um, and we, we will continue to be, update you as, as we become aware of information uh, to get that information out to the public. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblyman Gallagher. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we, we want to put you at ease. That is our purpose today, but also insist and encourage you to be wary. <coughs> we uh, who inhabit this valley long have had to deal with the rivers. And I've had to deal with the Delta during my career. And it's sometimes very touchy. This situation is a little bit more complicated with the spillway damage. It uh, took another turn. Fortunately, a couple of days ago, DWR was able to test that spillway and it was able to accommodate a greater flow. And that's provided a significant relief that gives us a breath of hope here right now. But we know that storms are yet to come and not just the next series. There could be some all the way through the spring and we're going to have to be ready and prepared for that. What the state can do is ensure that there's the maximum effort and focus 
on the situation, and I can assure you from my perspective that is so. There's been concern about some conflicting messages, but a whole lot of that has just been that the story has been moving so quickly. The situation has changed so rapidly, and you get new news coming out, and that's what you want, the most current and informative news. I can assure you that uh, James and I have been in touch with all of the uh, appropriate agencies every day, including the director of the department, the acting director of the Department of Water Resources, and directly with the governor's office. And the governor's office is aware of and is monitoring and aware of our situation up here. That's helpful to us if something does happen and the governor needs to call an emergency, but there is no call for that now. But it, it's a wake-up call for us to not get complacent. For the four years of the drought, flooding, we did not have to worry about it. And when you don't have to worry about something, it's far distant from your personal and your future, and so maybe you get a little bit lax. Well, what you need to do now is to prepare your property and your person for any eventuality. And the chief and the sheriff and all of these emergency folks can tell you what that kind of preparation needs to be. But it focuses on your quickest way to get out. And when you get the signal, do so. A lot of people resist and cling to their property and their home and their cat or their dog, and that's where we get into problems. And also do an inventory and prepare what you do need to move, most essential things. And in these emergency situations, all things can't be packed up and taken away. We have to respond. But right now, fortunately, we've had a little bit of respite, and that's helped, and particularly the ability to move more water through the spillway and out of Lake Oroville. We're also watching Shasta and the flows into Lake Shasta and the releases into the Sacramento River because that more often has been a big flood problem than even the feather, all up and down the length of that very large river. But as far as I'm concerned, all parties are on the alert, are being watchful. And James and I are working with all of them on your behalf to keep track of things. It's caution and preparedness. Those are the bywords for the times. And we watch those re reservoirs fill, and we want to be gleeful about it for the drought ending. But there are sometimes problems when we have these heavy storms. It is very normal, as the chief said. We've had many instances. But right now, the, the goal is to keep everybody informed to the highest degree and to keep everybody prepared to the highest degree and have trust and confidence and your emergency responders, they're trained, they know what to do, work with, and cooperate with them. We will all get through this in due time. So uh, thank you, uh, Chief Daly, and uh, to uh, Senator Nielsen and Assemblymember uh, Gallagher. Um, uh, Rachel, do you have any uh, questions that uh, you have for anyone up here on the stand? Uh, one thing I, I did fail to mention is we also do have representation uh, from Yuba City Unified School District uh, with us here today, too. So in regards to the levy, um, we haven't had any concerns with the levy as far as the water levels. Our biggest issue and the, and the reason you've probably seen uh, fire personnel on the levees is we have, we have had some water rescues. So we've had people down in the area that we've actually had to go into the river and get out of the river safely. So that goes back to being prepared and, and uh, making our job easier by, by not being down there. There's really no need for anyone to be down in the levee area because uh, accidents happen and then it puts uh, the civilians at harm's way as well as our, as our firefighters and police officers and other first responders. Um, if there were firefighters on the levee, it's probably because they were just seeing what it looked like, kind of getting some information for themselves. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier on a specific thing about being prepared 
is if you go to the city website, I'm sure the counties and, and, and other cities have something very similar. We have a Be Prepared Yuba City workbook, which has a very good checklist for homeowners on how to be prepared for disasters. So there's some very specific um, information in there on, on how to best be prepared and make sure that you cover all your personal needs for your home and, and your area. And so I'd recommend that highly. Thank you. Yes, uh, I believe that our homeless population is being informed. We, we have county officials going out there as well as our sheriff. I'm pretty sure uh, the police chief has been down at, at their areas informing uh, the homeless about the, the p uh, potential rise of water that's going on, as well as we have uh, people from mental health uh, going down there and uh, asking people to move. Sutter County uh, put 43 uh, homeless people in, in hotels just recently, and I believe Supervisor Flores can probably uh, talk to this better. I think we have like 21 still in there. 21, 21 that are still th still in there. So, and we'll we'll still accommodate uh, other people that during high uh, weather storms uh, to move into those hotels as well. Along with the briefing this morning in Oroville, uh, they advised us that there would be clear warning if they had any concerns or issues up there. We're also sending people up there for their briefings and planning meetings every twice a day to keep informed of their status. Um, we feel very comfortable right now that they've got things, um, they're doing the, the best they can, they're handling it the best they can. Um, they, they assured us that there was no imminent threat to the dam. Uh, this, was, this was strictly a, an issue they're having with the spillway. They have contingency plans. Um, and, and we feel very comfortable with that. Uh, as far as, as, far as um, advance notice, they had assured us they'd give us plenty of advance notice as far as if there was, a, was any concerns or th they're, they're very, let me put it this way, they're very sensitive to our needs, to agencies south of, of Oroville, that any time that the, uh, the cubic feet per second that they're letting out of the dam changes in either direction, up or down, they're notifying us so that we can keep them informed and be prepared. No, I wouldn't say there's a number. I can tell you right now, as of this morning at 10 o'clock, it was 65,000 cubic feet per second was what they were releasing out of the dam, which is, which if you keep in perspective, and, th and this is where I think it helps a lot, is uh, during the floods previously, uh, we've seen 160,000 coming out of the dam, and that's, and that's its capacity, well within its capacity. So I, I would like to uh, once again uh, inform the public of uh, two websites that both Sutter and Yuba County have uh, online. They are BePreparedSutter.org or BePreparedYuba.org where you can pr provide, uh, where you can uh, receive a variety of information. Uh, you can also sign up for text and email alerts on those websites. Uh, both uh, counties have actually set up a hotline for Yuba County. Uh, the phone number is area code 530. 749-7520, and for Sutter County, the number is 530-822-4988 and 530-822-7556. We'd encourage residents to uh, uh, watch uh, uh, social media and uh, their local communities' uh, websites and uh, Facebook pages, as that's one of the places where we continue to uh, provide uh, updates um, up to the minutes. Again, we want to thank all the jurisdictions here uh, participating in this regional press conference that included both Yuba and Sutter counties and uh, uh, most of uh, the local agencies within, within that area. So once again, we appreciate uh, everyone being here and encourage everyone to uh, be prepared. Thank you. Additional note, uh, tomorrow Assemblyman Gallagher and I are going to be on site up there uh, with the, the DWR people. Uh, giving us their daily briefings that we're aware of or our staff or we are participating in, but they're actually going to give us an, an on-site.
to the degree that they can. We're probably not going to go down in the hole, but we're going to be up there tomorrow.